Gaming Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're well and I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the wheel arches and fitting the wheel arches. It seems really simple, but I've come across problems before where the holes have been too big to fit the wheel arches on, so I'm just gonna cover off a little bit on that and a few pointers which might help you out if you're fitting wheel arches at some stage. Also, just wanted to mention a couple of things. So. Obviously under the bonnet is looking absolutely amazing now and you get to the point where you don't want to fit old grubby bits back on. So I've got the Carbretta assembly, inlet manifold and exhaust manifold and I want to give this a good clean up before it gets on the car. Uh, I need a rebuild kit, they seem to be difficult to get hold of at the moment so Paul Jeffrey's on the hunt for a rebuild kit for me. And then what I would normally do is put this in some Petra and clean it up with a paintbrush. Um, but I don't think that's going to come out that nice. So I've been looking at ultrasonic parts cleaners. Um, I can probably get a 10 litre one for just under 100 quid. But I don't know how good they are. I've not used one before. I know people that rebuild motorcycle carburetors and that use ultrasonic parts cleaners. So let me know if you've used one before. How good will it bring up this carburetor? Is it worth me getting one? Obviously I can use it for other bits as well. So... I was thinking it might be a good investment, but if it's gonna do no better than cleaning up with a bit of petrol, you know, in a container, then, then I won't bother. But if it does get it up looking like new, I might well invest in one. I've also got the hubcaps here. So I mentioned in this video today, actually, I've been giving them a bit of an overhaul. Um, they are gonna be sort of OEM plus. So as you can see, actually, they're nice and shiny. That is shinier than they would be as normal because it's got they've got lots of lacquer on there. Uh, the black on the edge is normally just a matte black, but I've gone uh, sort of satin black with them, so it's got a little bit of a shine to it. Uh, they're looking absolutely great. I'm just waiting for the centre decals at the moment, which is coming from uh, Sticky Fingers. So once they've got the decals on, they're going to look really amazing on those Hillman Imp wheels. I'll save that for a future video. Um, that's about it, I think. Oh, I just wanted to ask as well. So <clears throat> gets that time of year. I'd normally be booking the summer holiday abroad. Obviously didn't go anywhere last year. Didn't go anywhere the year before that. So I really want to get away with this year, but I don't think it's going to happen. So you get to the point you think, well, it's got to be a staycation. I'm going to save a few man bit of money this year again on holidays. So you start looking at projects and I start looking at project minis. And I almost have to give myself a slap around the face and say, for God's sake, Keith, you've got a mini in the garage, a project, and it isn't finished yet. And then you've got two other minis which you haven't got time to drive. So why buy another mini? So the mind sort of wanders a bit then. I start looking at other stuff. So... Um, so for, for me, that is cars of the sort of era I grew up in learning to drive. So it's late 80s, early 90s cars. So my sort of default searches on eBay, I look at things like Ford Escort RS Turbos, 90 spec ones, because it was a car which I wish I could have had back in the day, but I could never afford to insure one then. Uh, Renault 5 Turbos. Uh, if you've been around for long enough and seen some of my previous videos and that sort of thing, I used to be into TVRs, so I'd love to get another TVR Cerbera or a Chimera maybe, or um, a Tuscan. I'd love a Sagaris, but I don't think my pockets are that deep. And uh, yeah, it just made me wonder. Um, so let's say, for instance, you know, if you want to go and buy a really nice mini Today, uh, let's say you've got 30 grand in the bank. The place I would go to would be Richard Williams Minis because he has some absolutely amazing cars. They are phenomenal. And, and for 30 grand, you could get a really, really nice Mini. So let's say you've got 30 grand. You're not allowed to spend it on a Mini. What would you spend the money on? What would you buy? What classic car would you have? I know a lot of the viewers of this channel are a similar sort of age and demographic as I am. So it'd be interesting to see what, what you would have if it couldn't be a classic mini. So get down in the description down the bottom, leave a comment, let me know. And it'd just be interesting to see, I think. So yeah, let me stop waffling on anyway. And uh, let's get into this week's video. Thanks for tuning back in, by the way. Right, just a quick update on where we are. And this might 
come after I've shown the wheels and the wheel trims. But I'm just getting this side assembled back just because I want to see what it looks like with the hubcaps and obviously the correct wheel nuts on there now. So I'm going to mount and fit the wheel arch. Before I fit the wheel arch, I've gone over here with Dynax. This is actually the cavity wax stuff, which is brown, but that'll be behind the wheel arch. So we put the wheel arch on, just go over with some brake cleaner just to take off the little bit behind or the bit that's on show. So that's protected nicely now. Um, the wheel arches themselves, so these are just mini special wheel arches, plastic. They're only about 20 quid for a set. I don't think you can get genuine ones anymore. And I've put, um, so these on this age mini, there was no, as far as I know anyway, there's no rubber seal between the wheel arch and the body. And it does actually damage the paintwork well, you can't see it on there because it's behind the dynax now, but it rubbed against the paintwork. On later MPI minis, they did have an arch rubber on there, which go on these wheel arches and the sports pack arches, but it's expensive and it doesn't um, go on very well. So it's £6.30 a corner, so 24 25 quid for the whole lot. But what I've done instead is just bought some of this sort of generic rubber, that sort of profile from mini spares that's a couple of quid a meter so i've bought five meters i might not have got enough i thought maybe it's a meter per arch plus a little bit i might just be about all right but i think i should have got six just to be on the safe side but it's a lot cheaper and as i say the mpi stuff is stuck on um it's a lot thinner than this and it does come off it's and it looks horrible it's a pain when it comes off so this what i actually do as you can see is put it on the back i clean this edge off with a brake cleaner to make sure it's chemically clean and then i just dab a bit of super glue every few inches and just be patient with it put it on and hold it in place and that super glues um, the rubber on so you're not relying on the arch holding the rubber on there's a dab of super glue every few inches just holding that on once it's on the car it'll hold it in place anyway um, but yeah that might help someone out because this this can be a pain as well to get on and looking nice but I was just super glue on rubber when it's clean sticks like um, the proverbial whatever it is to a blanket it sticks very well it sticks like sticking your fingers together it sticks very well so um, that's how I do it I'm also just painting up these hubcaps at the moment these have caused me an absolute nightmare just because um, I'm using different paints so the center bits have been done in hammerite that sort of gunmetal shiny stuff uh, I'll show you what they look like later they look absolutely amazing um, but it's just reacting so I'm basically warming it up each time at the moment very light coats and building it up with light coats but I've done two that have come out okay but these two have reacted and I've needed to redo them right I thought I'd show you this because it might help some people out so the holes on my wheel arch in the front panel and the actual wheel arch itself are, are too big they're uh, too big for the rivet. So if I put that in, the rivet's not gonna be tight in there, it's gonna come loose. And that's because the rivets have been drilled out in the past. Someone's probably scraped a wheel arch and they've put a new arch on it and they've made the holes too big. Now they've just put bigger rivets in there, which didn't look right, but I've got the proper rivets, which are black. These are used on the MPI minis. And I, I was thinking about just welding these holes, just blobbing them, grinding it back, re-drilling them. But I really don't want to do any, I want to avoid doing any welding on the car so I can say it's completely unwelded. So what I'm actually going to do, I've got the rivet here. I've also got a small washer. So what I'm going to do is put the washer behind and use that because this washer is the right size hole for the rivet. I'm going to put that behind, then put the wheel arch on, then put the rivet through and then the washer will just obviously close up that hole so I don't have to weld anything and uh, that rivet should hold in place and it's going to be a bit of a faff because I'm going to have the plastic wheel arch on there as well but that will sort out my holes which are too big uh, also wanted to show you a little tip I've got for putting these rivets on which I learned from um, um, halfway 
throw sort of doing sprouts arches. So depending on what type of rivet gun you have, I had the problem where I can't, I couldn't quite fit the rivet gun down inside okay. I did get them on okay on sprout, but it was a little bit of a faff. So as you can see, um, that can be quite difficult to get right down inside there. So what I'm gonna do, I've not tried it yet, but it should work. If you get your riveter, um, obviously that, that clamps the end of this rivet and pulls it through. If you pull it shut, you should be able to put the rivet in and you should be able to feel where the teeth are inside which engage to pull the rivet through. So as you can see, we've got about, probably about 10, 12 mil gap there. So what I'm actually gonna do to make this a little bit easier is I'm gonna fill up that gap a little bit just with a couple of nuts. In fact, one or two should be able to do it. I'll put a washer on there as well, just so it doesn't damage it. Uh, one should do it, maybe two. If I go two, does that still give me a bit of grip? Yes, it should do. And what that will allow me to do then, is when I then go through the arch, can you see, I can then get the riveter on there okay. And I should be able to pull that through. So hopefully that helps you. I mean, you can get some sort of long nose riveters, which might be able to do it without doing that, but that's the way I'm gonna do it. Hopefully it might make your life a little bit easier as well. So in the end, I only used one nut. So I used one nut. I put a little washer there as well, just to stop it damaging the black on that rivet. Um, and one nut was absolutely fine. What I found, I tried it with two, and it just didn't give me enough bite. And what it actually did was pull the rivet through slightly and then I couldn't grip it again. And I, I actually ended up having to break off the rivet and put a new one in. So um, yeah, I, I would try just one nut. I mean, that's only a, an eight mil nut and that worked perfectly okay. It just gave me enough clearance um, to get inside the wheel arch. And then obviously the bit I was talking about, if your holes are elongated in the wheel arch itself, Obviously put that through the arch, through the metal in the wheel arch itself. So through the plastic arch, through the metal arch. And then when the hole was elongated, I just put a washer on the back of there, held it in place and then clamped the rivet up and it works perfectly. Let, let me show you on the car and you'll see what I mean. So hopefully you can see that, but it's worked a treat. Obviously there's the back of the rivet. That hole was too big, but I've managed to fit the washer on the back of there. That works absolutely perfectly. So I hope that, really hope that helps you out. As I say, lots of minis by now will have elongated or enlarged holes in the wheel arches. And uh, yeah, aside from sort of filling them up with weld and re-drilling them, there's not much you can do apart from fit bigger rivets in and then they don't look right or put bigger self-tapping screws in. But yeah, just a little washer on the back. That gives the, the rivet something to grip and uh, works a treat so and there obviously is our rivet on the car now and that fitting is fitting really snugly the rubber is tight up against there the wheel arch is nice and tight because we haven't got any elongated holes or enlarged holes i'm really pleased with how that's turned out and obviously it is waxed behind there the wheel arch is kicking out a little bit at the bottom here. That's quite normal, to be honest. What I do with that normally is just heat it up with a heat gun and then just hold it in place with some masking tape until it cools down or just hold it in place with your finger and uh, we'll get that sitting right. But I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful. If it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. See you again soon.